Have you kept in touch with Pat in, in well, later years? I have as much as I could do. Mm. But I tried to read him several times. I never got hold of him. I've, I've had good jockeys. I had Joe Mercer. And I said to Joe Mercer, um, um, look, I've got the chance of getting Pat Edwardy uh, next year. What do you think? Oh, he yes, said, he said, we, we call him Polyfiller. And I said, why? Oh, he filled with all those gaps. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and Frank Morby had riding for me, second jockey. I said to Frank, look, I've got a, a, I've got a chance of getting Pat Edwin next year. What do you think about him? Oh, yes, he said, uh, he's all right. He said he wants putting in a, uh, uh, he wants putting in a, a cage with a, um, what, did he, what did he say? He put, put, put him in a cage with a, something or other. And he said, leave him there a fortnight. He might see some sense. <laughs> but he got on well, you know, all the jockeys I've spoken to that rode against Pat, you know, Lester and, and all the top jockeys. No one's got a bad word to say about him. Never, never. And how did, how did he compare with Joe Mercer as, as a jockey? Well, I mean, he, he didn't have the style of Joe. A different sort of style. But I mean, he, he wrote me a thousand, a thousand one hundred and thirty-three winners. Um, and he started with me, the first winner he wrote was 19, 19, 1971, his first winner for me. And uh, away we went from there. Did you have any crosswords together? Never, never. You couldn't, you couldn't. He couldn't. I mean, he, 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 didn't, he wasn't like Lester. Lester used to go his own way and, and, and choose his own rides, and it was awkward, and he lost the way. He was brilliant. But Pat, no, always like that, straight away. Uh, he knew about all the horses. He, oh. mm. yeah, I think he's the old adage, isn't it, that there's some jockeys, the best jockeys are the ones that make least mistakes. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that, probably, that probably sums him up better than anything. That's right, that's right. He was very special. Dancing Brave, you know, when he had to get on him. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know. Dancing Brave in, 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 in the arc. I mean, he just said, oh, I, I, he'd ridden him in the King George, I think. And so I went to sue on him. He said, I've got to hold him up. Sure enough, he did hold him up. And he came last, last one into the race and won the race. Incredible. And again, just comparing other people, comparing him to, you mentioned Lester, you know, two different, not only styles and jockeys, but different people as well. Well, yeah, very much, very much so. Lester too. Lester was our first classic winner was Humble Duty in 1970. And uh, <coughs> he'd ridden her in the Fred Darling, and I said, look, the filly isn't eating, not eating anything at all. <laughs> I know I've got to get a right race into her. It might help her. Uh, sure enough, he gave her a lovely ride. He got beaten by Jimmy Lindley, riding an animal um, of Dick Hearns uh, in, in the classic trail at Ascot. And, uh, I, and I, after the race, uh, and I said, now, don't be hard on her, Lester. She hasn't really started to eat properly. And Lester said, oh, all right. And, uh, I got off after the race. I said, uh, will, you, "Will you ride her in the guineas?" No, I'll me the ring tonight. So uh, and I rang him that night and I said, "Will you ride her in the guineas?" Yeah, I'll ride her. He said, "And she'll win." I said, "What? Win? A classic race?" And anyway, and, and uh, all he said was, "What's the owner like?" <laughs> with, with the running companions. I said, "Oh, she's all right." So that was it. that was Leicester, right? That was typical Leicester. Um, you've seen so many things change. I mean, you've had such a, I mean, racing's been brilliant to you, hasn't it? Hmm? Racing in, in general, the the horse racing game has just been, been your life. But it's been it's been fantastic for you as well, hasn't it? We've had a marvelous time, absolute magic. I mean, Bob, Bob Bob died last year. Uh, you know, everything has gone really incredibly well. When I started at Windsor House, I had no single horse. I bought the yard um, at Windsor House with no horse at all in it. And uh, uh, in 1959, uh, no, 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 1959, uh, uh, and I had no single horse in it. 
and I had I bought a yard with uh, three, two cottages, and, and and a house, and about thirty boxes, for twelve thousand pounds. So I mean, you, you know, you can't think of that now. Buying a buy a nice house and thirty boxes. And they gradually came in, you know, they, they came in to me and, and, <laughs> and I gradually I got the horses and eventually we, we got so big we couldn't, we had to cross the yard across the road and then eventually I got the chance of, uh, of, uh, of, of, I saw Henry Can Derek Candy and he said, and I saw her riding out, at some, I went out somewhere on a long track, right, and he said, oh, um, would you like to try and play? next door, which he owned. And I said, no. Yes, please, put me down, will you? And uh, so I got the chance of going to St. Mary's. And that was, that was, I sort of, more and more has arrived, that's it, so. Yes. so we were very lucky, we, we had a marvellous lucky time. And, and things change, not only in horse racing, that things change in life. Do you like the way that things have, have changed or evolved in horse racing or not? Well, I've always said that I thought that a hundred horses was enough for anybody. And that, that was, to me, was we, we, we could do it. We had the cottages, we had the gallops, everything else. I felt that was a good number to start with and don't, go, don't get any, any, any bigger. And uh, I've always thought that was about right. But now they've got two or three hundred. I mean, look at, look at uh, Richard Hannon now. Uh, junior with, I mean, he's got God knows how many, but, you know, they work it out in their own way. The great thing is that you know, all the horses are different, and even the good ones and the bad ones, you know, you've got to try and find the right race for the right horse, always. We had a filly called uh, Monembastia of the Rothschilds, and, uh, and they, they, I think the work riders always go, that, that's useless. And I said, well, I said, let's see, we'll find a race for it. And I found a race for it at Salisbury. And Frank Moore wrote it, and uh, bang, and it won. I couldn't believe it, a very really bad horse. And that was the great thing about training, was to, to win with the good ones as well as the bad ones, you know? <laughs> to give everyone value for money. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we gave them value for money. We, we, I think that, uh, that year, 1975, we won. So we won 100, 125 races we won. With 100 horses in the yard, that was all. Mm. It's got, they don't do that now. No, it's got, it's got, it's changed in the sense of the bigger yards have got bigger. Yeah. And, it, and it's rather, I mean, you can't penalise success, can you? But it's meant that there are less people making a living out of it. There are. That's right. the, 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 the lower level is much harder. Mm. Much harder. You know, the, 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 the top level is still very hard to get to. But uh, people like Michael Stout, you know, wonderful trainers. But they're, oh, there are a lot of good trainers about. Even, even the trainers of the bad horses, you know, the better they're about. And you still, do you still watch racing? Do you still read I the do, racing? I do, I go racing as much as I can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have, a, I had a, <laughs> about 13 years old, I got the bug ready from my cousin Falk. And, uh, and I got the rug ready from him, and away I went. And I then went in the army for two years, and then I ended up as a corporal in the intelligence corps. I mean, I, and uh, I said, I must go to a trainer. And uh, so my father knew Geoffrey Freer, the handicapper, and said to me, uh, uh, oh, look, Geoffrey uh, uh, Freer said, oh, look, I, I know a man you ought to go to in Newmarket called Geoffrey Brook. And uh, so I went to, went to stay with him. I was there three or four years. I learned a hell of a lot. And then I got the bug and I went to Helen Norton Hall with my cousin, whose husband had been killed in, in, in hunting with the old box. And, uh, I, 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 and, and she wrote to me and said, will you help? I, she couldn't then hold a license. So I, I said, yes, fine, I, I'll come to you. I had the license, so I went to her. We had about 20 horses. I think we had, they were pretty ordinary, too. And I uh, had a good old horse, rather moody, called Gilles de Retz. And, uh, and he, 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 uh, 
he, he won the uh, Colorado Cup, I think, but Larry, but he won the 2,000 units too. He said, Larry old bugger, he had to he was a Larry old bugger. Anyway, and I went to him, the only good horse we had then. And eventually I was there, I think about four or five years. And uh, when I went there, we had about 20 horses. When, when I left there, possibly I was helping a bit, but uh, we had 80 horses there. And uh, uh, Engelhardt arrived on the scene, uh, and uh, you know, away we went. And then I thought it was time to start training. And I got married, and then it thought, come on, we've got to get on with it. So, and of course, in those days, there weren't the, there weren't the all weather gallops. There weren't, oh, no, you know, none, it of was all... none of that. No, there wasn't a single all weather gallop then. You had a bit of a plough. You used to plow, uh, one with, you left a bit of land, you ploughed it, ploughed it up, kept harrowing it, ploughing it. That was all. Now it's all different plastic things, and they're not so much better, but still it. They don't work. seem to go any faster, do they? Uh, uh, they don't. That's the thing. But no, no, it, it, it's changed a hell of a lot. But it's still the same thing if the right horse wins the right race. That's your job, to do that, find the right race for it and win with them.